Welcome back to Turning Hard Times into Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm really pleased to have with me once again Dr. Quentin Henning. He is uh, heads up Novo Resources. That's a company, of course, that's very familiar to all of our listeners. That's a company that I think most mining investors simply don't really understand all that well because it is a very unique project, very unique. Uh, it is massive. I believe it's very, very large. Uh, the overall picture is is, is quite uh, quite fascinating and really important, I think, for investors to stay tuned to what's going on. So I'm really pleased to have Dr. Quentin Henning with me once again. Thanks for joining me, Quentin. Thank you very much, Jay. It's always good to talk to you. I, I should mention to our listeners, NVO is a symbol in Toronto, uh, NSRPF in the U.S., which is a symbol that I buy it under, uh, $2.00. 56 cents thereabouts in U.S. money, market cap a little under a half a billion dollars. Well, Dr. Quentin uh, Henning, your your um, efforts uh, have been mostly involved since you made this massive discovery in Western Australia of conglomerate gold. It's been mostly uh, it's been mostly involved. You know, you've been discovering and and trying to figure out how to how to mine, how to assay, how to. Uh, appraise the economic value of this deposit, uh, and you've been working on it for a number of years, made a lot of progress in a number of different ways, but now you're ready to start mining at the, the first of three major areas that you've discovered, and that's Beaton's Creek. Talk to us about your plans for Beaton's Creek right now. Uh, certainly. Look, uh, as you said, we, we started working here in Western Australia at a very conceptual level. You know, it was predicated on the notion the the uh, conglomerate gold deposits here might be akin to, to stuff we'd see as far away as South Africa, which, you know, at one time was probably connected to, to the Pilbara Craton. You know, some similarities, certainly, but also some differences. We have conglomerates that are very coarse grain. You know, we have uh, bouldery conglomerates. And the other thing that we see is quite coarse grain is, is the gold itself. You know, so this is nuggety gold mineralization. Um, we, we started to recognize that early on working here at Beaton's Creek. You know, Beaton's is as you said, one of um, actually many uh, conglomerate gold projects we have across the Pilbara. So it's just it's really the, where we we uh, first started working. It was an area where uh, there was some historic mining, mainly modern alluvial mining, uh, but uh, we could see the conglomerates you know sticking out of the ground, multiple layers, uh, by and large flat deposits. Okay, these are conglomerates that are flat, and geologically we were able to put together a picture of what was going on. Uh, one of the more in- interesting things about Beaton's Creek is that uh, the deposits are quite sheet-like, quite extensive. Uh, these deposits are not channelized or you know localized alluvial, you know paleoalluvial deposits. They are actually uh, very extensive, and uh, that you know that makes them very vit ran like uh, you know the vits, as many people know, uh, have conglomerates that were mined in some cases for many kilometers along strike. Okay, so that's important because you know it's hard to mine something that's small, erratic, you know, so forth. Uh, but we, we put, put together a, a geological model that said, hey, this uh, area should be underlain by extensive sheet-like deposits. Uh, we, we proved that up through our, our drilling and, and costing and our, our trench sampling and so forth. And we also, uh, you know, employed uh, elements of bulk sampling to, to really quantify the grade. As we learned that the, the mineralization was quite nuggety, we knew that we had to take bulk samples, something that would underpin uh, a solid resource. And we did that. You know, Beaton's Creek is really where we proved up the protocols and, and so forth that we've used uh, going forward. We now have a very solid resource, about 900,000 ounces, uh, half indicated, half inferred. It's about, you know, it's over two grams, probably a weighted average, about 2.4 gram per ton. Uh, it, it's a great deposit. It's flat lying right at surface, and we are now basically in a position to go mine it. Okay, so so we have been working very hard, not only on the geology and, and getting the mine permit in line for Beaton's Creek, but, you know, obviously through this transaction, we've had uh, our sights on uh, acquiring the nearby Millennium Mill, uh, which uh, now allows us to move the project into uh, a production mode. Okay, so we've completed the deal. We announced that on, I believe, Tuesday of this week. And we are f- full steam ahead. I mean, we have a, we're building our team. We have a lot of work going on right now. You know, we're not taking this, uh, lightly by any stretch. We're actually doing work on the plant, on the camps, facilities, and so forth right now. We're trying to get everything up so that we can, uh, up to speed so we can get this thing into production as fast as possible. All right. So how did, how did it happen? This mill becomes available, which is really, I believe, very, very important to the economics and getting you moving towards production more quickly, right? But how did that become available? 
Yeah, look, uh, the company that uh, operated the mill, Millennium Minerals, uh, they they had been producing since I believe September of 2012, somewhere thereabouts. Uh, they're focused on a different type of ore deposit, different type of gold deposit in the uh, nearby area. Okay, so they were mining uh, what we call load deposits. They're you know near vertical quartz vein systems, and they were mining these things via open pits. So they were mining small, shallow open pits. Uh, over a, a strike length of something like 30 or 40 kilometers, you know, little pits scattered over a very long distance. They were trucking that ore back to their mill, uh, and they, they did okay. I mean, while, while they were into good oxide mineralization, they actually did quite well for a time. But uh, as time went on, uh, they found that the sulfide material below or the fresh material, unoxidized material below, uh, was semi-refractory to refract, and the metallurgy became more complex. So uh, basically the company recognized they had to do something uh, to build up, uh, you know, to, to, to add additional life. So they attempted to, to treat the sulfide ore through, we'll call it an innovative technique, Unfortunately, you know, it just didn't have uh, enough science behind it or enough. They didn't have enough lead time, I guess, uh, is basically the, the best way to put it, to, to work out their issue. So last year when they went to mine the sulfide, they simply did not uh, accomplish a profitable operation. And uh, uh, they went into receivership uh, or administration in November, I believe, Year, roughly a little over a year, or a little less than a year ago. Mm-hmm. Well, by contrast, though, you're you're looking at very considerable continuity, I believe, in a grade on surface, not a vertically uh, orientated deposit, but a flat lying pretty near surface or right on surface, actually, uh, almost anyway, with a 2.4 gram per ton grade, which is really you know quite high for a lot of operations like this, and you know open cut, uh, open surface mining, right? Should it it should bode well, I would think, especially. Um, with grades, uh, you know, with the gold price at 1900 thereabouts, and uh, and also the fact that it's uh, not refractory, or it's really, uh, I believe, mostly oxides, right? That's right. Yeah, let's uh, let's kind of pick this apart in a bit more detail. So the the mineralization, as you said, is not refractory. It's not tied up in sulfides. The gold is free milling, and that goes not only for our oxide mineralization, but our fresh mineralization underneath. So both ore types or both mineralization types are amenable to uh, treatment at this mill. Okay, the mill, uh, just so people know, is, has been operating at about 1.88 million ton per annum uh, over the past several years. Okay, so it's, you know, demonstrable throughput of about just under 1.9 million tons per year. That's great. Uh, we're hoping we can operate at that level. Okay, uh, we do think that our ore, given that we don't need to grind it so fine, that we should be able to achieve that kind of throughput, or, you know, with a little luck, maybe even higher. Than that, okay. So, so that's one aspect. Uh, you know, we have a great deposit that's metallurgically compatible and also uh, commensurately sized with the mill that we have in, in our company now. Okay, so let's look at the other aspects. Okay, Beaton's Creek, as you said, is flat lying, and and really it's comprised of a stack of conglomerates. So you have. Uh, conglomerates, sometimes there's low grade in between. We're looking at how we can, uh, you know, capture some of that lower grade material. Obviously, gold price is high, so there's more opportunity for those kind of things. But really what we have are a sequence of layers, you know, in some places up to say six layers in, in, uh, you know, in, in place one after another. So we're going to mine these things much like a, a layer cake. Think of a tabletop coal mining in, you know, West Virginia or somewhere. It's of that ilk. Okay. So this is, you know, cheap, uh, easy mining. Uh, this is a very, very straightforward operation in many respects. Okay. Uh, so we know that, you know, from a trial mining experience and so forth, this should be a fairly straightforward exercise. Okay. Now let's look at, uh, let's look at Millennium's operation. They were mining small pits. They were mining multiple pits. You know, there's a, a lot of added costs associated with operating multiple pits at one time. You know, you have, you know, you have to distribute your overheads, uh, for each operation in those cases. In, in Beaton's Creek, at Beaton's Creek, we have one, basically one mine. Okay. So our, all, all our mineralization is coming out of one site. That's a big plus. That's a big plus. Okay, but nonetheless, Millennium has been able to operate in the Nulligan camp. You know, we'll call it for you can look at their quarterly reports. Over the past, um, say, six or seven years, uh, they've been operating at around maybe 135, 140 million Australian dollars all in, you know, like all costs associated with the operation, sustaining capital, so forth. So that gives you an impression of what what we might, you know, this is, uh, look, we do not have our economic study yet, be very clear, but uh, it's, you know, it's a goal that we're shooting for. Okay, so so that's a great outcome. So uh, now what's the best part? 
grade. I mean, my gosh, you know, the grades we have at Beaton's Creek are very good. You know, as I said earlier, you know, weighted average grades, probably around 2.4 grams. You know, with a little luck, you know, that nugget effect, you know, one of the benefits of the nugget effect is oftentimes when you go to mine something and the nuggets start popping out because you're mining a larger tonnage than you're sampling, uh, you often see a bit of a kick in, in gold. Well, yeah, we can't say that, you know, we cannot guarantee that, of course. We cannot any stretch, but, you know, with a little luck, we might see a bump like that. So, so what am I saying? We got free milling, higher grade mineralization. We can achieve, I think, readily achieve the throughput that uh, Millennium was seeing through that mill. Uh, we, we have a simple deposit, you know, it's a one single deposit that has to be mined. And then we, we have a pretty good understanding of the costs associated with operating in the Nulligan camp. Okay, this, these are the ingredients that I see will make a, a very high margin, very good deposit, very good mine. And, uh, you know, now we the, the most important part, the people. We have the team to do it. No, that's always an important thing, that's for sure. And uh, w- with a minute left or so here, Quentin, can you give us an idea how this fits into the bigger picture? Because, as I said, you have three major areas and three different types of conglomerate gold deposits that that are really very very attractive and they're and they're huge i mean we don't know i mean the size is just enormous this is what impresses me about your project it's not just beaton's creek although beaton's creek has a lot of extra upside as well around beaton's creek and other areas close to it but you have caratha and then you have Edgina, those two areas uh, in addition and so what does this mill mean potentially for the bigger picture Certainly. Look, uh, this mill really helps us unlock a lot of that value. We have a huge land holding, somewhere just shy of 14,000 square kilometers. We have projects as far away as 400 kilometers. Okay, Karatha, for example, where Comet Well and Pretty's reward. We have coarse gold. As everyone knows, we are moving towards a trial mining phase there, and we're going to use the mechanical sorter. In fact, we got photographs of it yesterday. They are uh, getting near to, to complete of uh, the build and then ship shipping it shortly. Uh, and once we get that on site, we can test it out. If, if we can produce a high-grade concentrate from Karatha, we can ship that over to the mill and simply add that feed into the stream. Okay, that that's a big sweetener. That's a big gain for us. That alone could add considerable production for us. Okay, now the other thing, you know, uh, we've got – Projects in the Nulligan area that have not been advanced anywhere near the state of Beaton's Creek, but now we can do that. Now we have incentive to do that. We've picked up land recently. We've cleared out the Creasy Joint Venture. We can expand Beaton's Creek. We can explore our new, our, our next series of deposits in the Nulligan camp. Those will come into the picture. And then finally, uh, the cash flow from this operation, we do anticipate being able to accelerate our work at Edgina. Of course, Edgina is a very big project for us. Uh, we've been doing work in the background. You know, of course, this transaction has kept us very, very busy. But, you know, now, uh, now that the announcement's been put out around this, we can get back to talking to our market about all the wonderful uh, work and news and so forth that we have from these other projects. I think people will see very quickly how we're going to bolt everything together and really uh, show how this mill, the, the, this acquisition, helps us unlock and build a foundation for Novo to become a, a significant mid-tier producer going forward. All right. What news might we look for next? You know, look over the next few months until we, we, we anticipate going into production, like actually producing first quarter next year. Okay, so in the meantime, we plan to update people regularly on progress around bolting everything together, you know, how, how things are going in, in that regard. But we'll also put out uh, news around Edgina uh, results, for example, as well as uh, some other exploration we're starting to do now that we're, we're reckon, you know, we can unlock that value. We're, we're starting to target some new things. So I think it's a very exciting time. It's really a growth phase. We'll have lots of news, both in exploration and moving this thing towards production. All right. Terrific. Well, thank you very much again for being with us, uh, Quentin, and uh, we'll look to keep up with you, no doubt, in the future. 